before we start though, I just want to warn you in advance, I'm not like good at embroidery, so don't take this as a step-by-step -step tutorial. Rather, you know, we can just be amateurs having fun doing this together, and maybe if you're a total beginner, you can take this as a template of things to do and a couple of things to definitely not do. One thing to note is that I literally only own one embroidery needle and a bunch of leftover embroidery floss from when I learned how to make friendship bracelets. I don't even have one of those hoop things that I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use to keep the fabric flat, so like, don't ask me questions about supplies because I literally don't know anything. With that all being said, let's get started. Glasses on. That's how you know it's business focused on seeing small things mode. But before we get started with the actual embroidery, let me show you my planning process that I went through the day before. I started by taking a photo of my konkin on my iPad, and then I went through my Pinterest inspiration board where I had pinned all of these images of really cool embroidery that I realistically cannot accomplish, but will do my very best to try. I imported the image into my Procreate app so that I could just plan everything digitally beforehand. That way it's a lot more convenient to rearrange and erase instead of drawing on the actual backpack. And by the way, this segment of the video is sponsored by the screen protector I'm using, which is paper-like. I find it great for digital art since the matte texture is a little bit more grippy and allows you more control over your Apple Pencil without ruining the tip, and it makes a really satisfying paper-like noise. Additionally, it also reduces the amount of glare on your screen, so if this sounds interesting to you, visit my link in the description and use my code on your very own paper-like screen protector. So that's the end of the sponsored segment. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And here is my completed digital plan, which I need to transfer onto the backpack itself. I'm doing this with a Ticonderoga pencil, which I'm not really sure is the best recommended method. Like I'm pretty sure there's specialized tools for this, but you know, it does the job. It's quite visible and it will wash off once I put it in the laundry. With that all set up, let's get started on actually embroidering. Okay, so I'm going to start with a nice light green color for the squiggly continent blobs on my earth. I sure do wish I had one of those needle threader tools right about now, but instead I'm just going to really attractively lick the end of the string. Next I'm going to tie a double knot at the end of the string. So now you got a nice thick boy to prevent the string from just falling out after you stick it into your fabric. So I'm just going to line it up with my template from behind and then Stick it in. I don't actually know if this is a valid embroidery technique, but basically first I start by coming in from the back and then you kind of go how you would if you were coloring everything in with a marker. So just back and forth and back and forth. I sure do wish I had a thimble right about now because this is a bit difficult. So once you've gotten that first like acrossness, um, just go on the other side, line it up with where you want it to come out from and go again. So you just make a series of horizontal lines until it fills in the shape that you want it to fill in. So one of the most common questions that I got was what I'm majoring in in university and that is a very good question and one that I don't really have a set answer to myself. Technically I'm declared as sociology but I'm not really that committed to that major. Right now the major that interests me the most at UCLA is communications, but also the UCLA communications department is very competitive. So I don't know if I'm gonna freaking get into that major if I want to have it, but I'm done talking myself out of things just because I think they're hard. I'm just gonna do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it works, I got a cool major. Oh goodness. I hope you can see everything that I'm doing all right, but you know, this is an amateur embroidery video for a reason, because I have no clue what I'm doing on the embroidery end and the filming end. If you had the option to leave UCLA for another school you applied to, would you leave? I mean, I really like UCLA. It's really fun and I feel like I have some like immersion and connections to the school having lived here and taken classes here for a couple of quarters. I also never really had a dream school. I was kind of just like, I'll just shoot my shot at a bunch of very disparate and different schools and see what'll take me and that'll be that. But looking back and reflecting on my experience so far, I honestly feel like Barnard should have been my dream school. I don't know. I just feel like at a big public university, it's easy to be lost and 
also kind of feel like the professors aren't very approachable since they are very preoccupied with their research at a R1 institution and they have a huge class so it's really hard for them to even know each individual student. I also feel like at a liberal arts school you're also like more open and free to explore a large variety of subjects without the barriers to entry like the gigantic lecture weeder classes at a public school. Barnard would definitely be like the only school out of everything I applied to that I would like leave UCLA for at this point but I don't even know if I really would because like the cost for one year at a private school for a family like mine that doesn't receive any financial aid is literally the cost of four years at my in-state very nice public school. So like, I don't know about that one. I'd probably stay here to be real. Alrighty, looks like I'm done with this green part. So I'm gonna do two more knots. That way this end is also nice and secure as well. Now I'm gonna switch over to this lighter blue shade and I'm gonna continue with that same sort of coloring in back and forth motion that I did with the green. For my next little planet, I have a blue border around just like a regular blue circle. So I'm gonna start with the same light blue that I used for the earth, just to help tie that color scheme all together and do the same back and forth stitching motion to color in this little circle. Also, while um, I work on that, let's answer some more questions. So this person asked me, what do I hate and what do I love about the study community? I mean, let's start with the positives. I love that it's, you know, it's mostly girls and women encouraging each other to strive to achieve great things academically, which hasn't really been something available to us for very long. And especially in countries where there's still active struggles to get women and girls the right to learn. I also love that like just the vibes are so positive. Like a lot of communities on the internet are built around trying to, to win over other people or to kind of put each other down. I don't know if that's just me having a confirmation bias or like my comment section just being overwhelmingly positive. I think the only thing that I would change about the Studygram community is it's overly focused on like the aesthetic of studying and sometimes the stationary and supplies of studying rather than actually learning, which I mean is granted a problem with Instagram and YouTube and just all social media in general. And it's just that no matter how much we want effective studying and progress and learning to be the spotlight focus of the internet, it's just unrealistic because social media, whether we like it or not, is based off of the image or the projected facade of productivity and organization and neatness and perfection and not acknowledging like the messy reality that life isn't perfect, notes aren't always perfectly groomed, because the raw reality that's sometimes kind of ugly and messy just doesn't get the views or the likes. And I feel so ugh, hypocritical like critiquing this because I am a huge part of this. So I guess that's not just a gripe with Studygram, but a gripe with social media culture in general. Um, something else specific to Studygram is the overemphasis on particular supplies and brands of supplies, such as the zebra mild liners or, you know, the pumpkin backpacks. There's occasionally this sense that these products are what will make me neat and organized and a perfect student. But it's also kind of this self perpetuating cycle of like, oh, I'm a study gram content creator. I should follow the trends that everyone else in my community does because that's what will help me become more popular because it's trendy. And then everyone does that because everyone does that. And it just keeps going in circles. Now that I finished my little light blue circle, I'm going to use this darker blue shade to create an outline around the blue. For the outlining, I'm going to use something that's like an actual legit embroidery technique, which is the backstitch method. You might have also noticed that I'm using my denim jacket as like a makeshift thimble. So what I'm going to do for the backstitch method is again, I'm going to start from the back just so that this little knot holding everything in place isn't visible. And then instead of going to the right side, which for me as a right-handed person would be the forward direction, I'm going to go to the left side. So now that I've made this smaller line and I'm on 
the left side of the starting point, I'm actually going to head to the right side, the forward side of the starting point from the back. Then like last time, I'm going to head in the left or backwards direction and lining up where I enter the fabric into the exact start of my previous little dash stitch shape. That way it forms a completely continuous solid line. So now I'm just going to continue doing that all the way around the rest of my little planet. Okay, one of the questions I just saw, which I found very um, entertaining is, will you curse in other videos? <laughs> Please do curse. Um, well, you see, this is the good place. So even if I wanted to curse, I couldn't. See, watch. Fork. Did I do this incorrectly? Was I gonna make it dark blue with a light blue outline? You know what, I'm sufficiently annoyed at this that I'm just gonna cut it out and redo it. <sighs> I finished redoing my little blue planet while watching old best dress videos. And we're gonna move on to my next little planet, which is gonna be purple with some rings around it. And I'm not gonna do much more explaining for this one since just like all the other ones so far, I'm just gonna use that same back and forth stitching motion to color in a circle. Our next question is, do APs actually matter once you get to college? And that really depends on the school you go to. In my personal experience, there are a lot of ways that AP course credit benefit me as a student. For example, I have been able to skip an entire year's worth of foreign language courses by getting a five on AP French. I got to bypass intro stats, the first two courses in the calculus series, and just got a lot of other general credits, even if they didn't exempt me from specific courses. Like when I came in as a freshman, I had around 50 credits, which is enough to make me a sophomore and technically can count towards my graduation credits such that I can graduate in about like a year and a half if I really want to. I'm not going to because uh, in the wise words of one of my friends, why would I want to reach unemployment sooner? However, if you go to a school that does not accept AP credits, then like, no, it doesn't matter. Most schools, especially like state schools, which the majority of people will end up attending, will accept some AP credits. So I recommend taking them. Now this pastel purple planet, unlike the iconic single ladies in Beyonce's hit song, Single Ladies, has a ring on it. So I'm gonna use this white thread, which just absolutely refuses to be threaded into the needle right now for some reason. And I'm gonna use the same back stitching method that I previously used for the blue border around my blue planet. So as a reminder, we're going to start from the back. And then this one is a little bit different because there's no real forward or backward direction since it's kind of an arc shape. So I'm gonna go, you know, like in the direction that I want my line to be moving since I'm kind of going in a C shape from this side to this side. For the next shape, which is my Big Dipper constellation, I'm still going to be using white. I cut myself a nice new long strand and I'm going to start by coming in through this first larger dot from behind and pulling it all the way through and tying a knot so I have a nice large dot. Now to go behind it, I don't want to go through the center of the knot, otherwise I'm just going to pull the knot back through the fabric. I speak from experience because I did that previously. Instead, I'm just going to go slightly off to the side of this knot, but still as close to it as I can get and pull it behind here so that it maintains that nice little dot appearance. Next, I want to do the dotted line in between these two larger circle dots. So I'm going to pull the string through like this so it pops out at the start of the first dash and then goes back to the back side at the end of that first dash. I hope this makes intuitive sense. My dashes are honestly kind of uneven because I didn't do a very good job of sketching them out in an even fashion so my bad that one's on me but I'm just gonna keep going and we can answer some more questions from the Instagram Q&A. Ooh, okay, this one is um, something I very much like to talk about, which is what is my favorite boba drink? Being Chinese American, I have been drinking that sweet, sweet bubble tea, pearl milk tea, whatever you want to call it, 
before it was made mainstreamly acceptable by white Americans. I'm also just like a tea fiend and kind of a... What did I just do? I got too hoity-toity about how much I like tea and now my thread just like doesn't like me anymore. It's okay, thread, I understand. Okay, I guess that's acceptable. This just this one star on the Big Dipper will just be a little bit bigger than all of its neighbors. But anyways, what I was saying was I really like tea and I like to think that I'm quite knowledgeable about it. So with that um, high degree of expertise in mind, let's talk about my favorite boba orders. So like um, most Asian people, I am lactose intolerant and I just generally don't really like milk anyways. So I usually get drinks with no milk. And the specific drinks that I like the most um, are winter melon for a non-caffeinated option or a plain Earl Grey black tea. I also like some specific types of green tea. I mean, I like pretty much all green teas, but in particular, I really like uh, hoji cha tea and sencha. And specifically, I always get them with less ice because that way you get more drink. I don't know, that's just what my mom always says anyways. And then I always get it with no sugar and no milk because, you know, the bitterness of non-sweetened tea really feeds my internal bitterness. No, I mean, I just think tea tastes better in its natural form. And avoiding those more like frappuccino types of drinks kind of allows you to get a better sense of like the actual quality level of that particular boba tea place. Since if the tea is bad quality, they don't get to mask it behind a bunch of sugar and milk that will make it taste good. Um, so thank you for coming to my TED talk about why you should get your boba tea with no sugar. I know it's a bit scary sounding for some people, but trust me, it's kind of like black coffee. It's an acquired taste that you really start to get used to and appreciate as you begin to be able to tolerate how bitter it is. A related question I got was what is my usual Starbucks order? And honestly, I don't really ever go to Starbucks because I'm not a big coffee person, although I will drink it if like good quality coffee is offered to me. Normally, if like I'm asked to go as like a social event, then I'll just get like a nitro cold brew because I like bitter drinks. What can I say? I'm going to give up on this little moon thing because honestly, I'm like getting exhausted and I feel like this little moon shape doesn't add that much to the design anyways. So instead, I'm going to move on to my little spaceship and I'm going to keep using the same white thread since I still have a good amount of length left. So kind of like everything else so far in this video, I'm just going to use that same back and forth coloring in motion to fill in my spaceship. One person asks, at what age do you take studying seriously? And uh, my answer for that is way too young. Like, I think the earliest I started stressing myself out over my grades was in fifth grade because I wanted to get a perfect score on every single science test that I had and I ended up doing that except for missing one point on one test. I guess that's competitive Bay Area study culture for you. It just really seeps into you at a young age. It continued to manifest itself while I was in sixth grade. Like I had crying breakdowns because I was worried about my grades, even though it was so stupid, like middle school classes and especially elementary school classes are your only job is to learn because the actual grades you get don't really have any significant impact on your future. There's of course a healthy side to like, oh, I'm gonna study because I want to learn things and do well academically. But I just don't like that it came from such an unhealthy place of almost disliking myself unless I was academically perfect. So yeah, long-winded answer, but the answer is like, fifth grade. Oh, oh. Now that I'm done with the main body of the spaceship, I'm going to add in some of those extra accents. So first on the main body of the spaceship, I'm just gonna back and forth color in the tip using this black thread and also tie a couple of knots to make the little windows. And then I'll be using orange and yellow to make the flames. Somebody wants to know what events I did in track. Um, so I started off my track career kind of rough because I had never been a student athlete before so I had no idea what the frick I was doing when it came to track. Um, so actually the first event I did was pole vault um, and my upper body strength is 
not spectacular so honestly I had no clue what I was doing there and uh, I wasn't very good at it so I very quickly switched out to doing the 200 and the 400. That didn't end up working out spectacularly because I feel like I just don't have the sprinter mindset of like giving it your all in a very short period of time. Instead, one of my friends who did long distance track convinced me to join cross country my sophomore year, and I did that. And uh, whoop de doo I ended up on varsity cross country despite having never been a runner for my entire life. Um, part of it was just that like the team was super small and in a sort of rebuilding, the last senior class was like massive type of year. I didn't have any like natural talent like in physical ability, but I've always been a very like determined and good at pacing myself out type of person. So long distance running just really vibed with me. So after that cross country season, I switched to doing the mile and the two mile in track with my main focus being on the two mile. Honestly, like my main event was cross country and track in the mile and the two mile, which are 1600 meters and 3200 meters was just like a way for me to keep developing and perhaps improve at my short distance speed skills, which I know to like the average person running two miles does not sound like short distance speed work. Although now that I think about it, like maybe that's why I have knee problems. I just sprinted three miles for every single weekend for about 10 weeks of the year. <laughs> and after that, my brain just completely short-circuited and I flopped over and finished my embroidery without really saying anything. I apologize for that. Um, all of the methods that I used were the same as I previously described, and you can see my reference image for the rest of what I did. And here is my completed backpack embroidery. I hope you found this video interesting and getting to know me and perhaps being a bit of a tutorial. I upload new videos about student life every week and you can check out my Instagram, TikTok, and second channel where you can find some very much not study related content. I'll see you next time.